another, another big category of substances, um, polymers. Polymer, so poly, um, many, so this is many mers, right? A mer is just a, a unit. So you can have a monomer, so that's a single unit, and a polymer is that monomer repeated in a chain-like structure, repeated over and over again. There are natural polymers. Your body has lots of polymers in it. Your DNA is a polymer. The polymers are the individual uh, base units in, in your DNA, and they're strung together, and that's what makes DNA. Proteins, starches, all natural polymers. Then we also have synthetic polymers, things like uh, PVC, styrofoam, nylon, plexiglass. We use a lot of these synthetic polymers in the materials we use in our everyday lives. Polymers are, are durable because the longer molecules have more surface area for the intermolecular forces to interact with each other. Because these are molecular compounds. So it's not a network covalent atomic solid where you have covalent bonds. We have individual molecules, but they're very long, and so they have a lot of surface area, and so the forces, dispersion forces holding them together is going to be uh, stronger. So we get higher melting and higher boiling points. In order to break a polymer or tear a polymer, you need to either overcome the intermolecular forces or break the covalent bonds. Is plexiglass really just it's made up of glass or is it just like... Plexiglass is actually a form of plastic. So it's melting. Yeah. It's, it, it has appearances and some characteristics similar to glass, but it, it is not glass at all. So there's different kinds of, of plastics. Uh, polyethylene. This is the simple, one of the simplest of the synthetic polymers. So polyethylene, many ethylene groups. So we've got these ethene. Um, a lot of these organic compounds have two names. Unfortunately, we still use both of them. So this is called ethene, or sometimes called ethylene. And that's the monomer. And you can take this monomer and react it and link it together to form long chains. And when those are linked like this, and this is called an addition polymer. So we're taking these monomers and adding them together. We're not losing any of the carbons or hydrogens. We're just putting them together. So that's an addition polymer. So there are different forms of polyethylene. There's high-density polyethylene. And we've got um, recycling labels on these. That's called HDPE, high-density. There's very little branching here. And so the chains can line up together um, closely. And so we've got high-density. And because they can line up better, you also have uh, greater strength and better heat resistance because you've got better, uh, stronger intermolecular forces holding them together. This is a plastic that's used in milk jugs. Then you also have low-density polyethylene. Here the polyethylene has more branching. Instead of just single chains, like this is just a single chain, and it can be very, very long. Um, in low-density polyethylene, they're going to have branches on them, and so then they can't nest together as well. And so that lowers the density of it, um, so it's lighter weight, but it also reduces the strength and reduces the heat resistance. And so low-density polyethylene is, is typically used in the plastic bags that they no longer give us for free at the grocery store. So at the end of the, of, of the polymers, wouldn't you have a double bond when it gets to the end? That's a good question. What about the end of this? Well, something obviously has to be going on at the end. Um, most likely there's just a hydrogen there. It's a good question. Uh, substituted polyethylenes. Here we've got polyethylene, but we've got some different things on it. Um, so here we have polyvinyl chloride. So here we have chlorides in here instead of some of the hydrogens. Regular Polyethylene would just be CH2, 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 CH2. But here, every other carbon has a chlorine on it. This comes 
um, from using chloromethane as the monomer. So this uh, PVC, uh, this is used um, like if you're putting in a, an irrigation system in your backyard, you're most likely going to use PVC. Lots of different plumbing fixtures use PVC. Our um, DI water here, this is probably PVC. It's just gray PVC. That's a good question. I was, I was just thinking of that as I was tapping the faucet. Why are these plastic instead of metal? Well, in a metal pipe, in a metal faucet, um, you could have metal leaching out into the water. And in the deionized water, we don't want any metal ions in it. And so the plastic isn't going to get contaminated with metals. So, you know, this is one variation, substituted polyethylenes. There's all kinds of different ways you can substitute them. And that's why we have this wide array of different plastics with different properties. Um, so those were addition polymers. Copolymers, um, copolymers have two different kinds of monomers. So co, you think of sharing. So here we have two monomers that are different and they're going to add together to form a dimer. So two mers instead of one, monomer, dimer. Um, and so then these dimers usually form together through condensation. A condensation polymer eliminates an atom or a small group of atoms during polymerization. So an addition polymer um, is probably going to have double bonds in it, and the double bonds go away, but we keep all the atoms. In a condensation polymer, as you put the monomers together, you lose some of the atoms. So here's a, a table from your book, just you know, kind of summarizing some of the different types of plastics. So these are addition polymers. We've got polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene. These are just using different monomers. Polyvinyl chloride, this is in that substituted polymer, substituted polyethylene. Um, different types of condensation polymers, polyurethane, um, polyethylene terephthalate. This is uh, one form of polyester, and nylon 6, 6. So there's lots of different nylon formulations. Any questions? That's the end of the chapter. Here's a question for you. What do you need to know? Do you got to memorize all of this stuff? No, you don't need to memorize all of it. Um, I think you should try to get these vocabulary terms. You should have a general idea of what a condensation polymer is, that that's the monomers coming together and it removes something. Something is lost. You should know what a dimer is. What is a copolymer? Um, substituted polymers, addition polymers. You should be familiar with the term and understand the general idea of polymers, that there are individual units stuck together to make really long chains. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to draw the structure of polyvinyl chloride or anything like that. <laughs>